Thanks, Dr. Savage. Hey, I'm wondering, when did it become, when did Israel become so important to the United States and maybe a little history on why we need to continue to support them? You know, you're asking the wrong person because I have an ambivalence about Israel and our commitment to the support level that we give them, to be frank. I know it's going to come as a shock to the audience because they think that I'm an automatic uh, knee-jerk neocon Zionist, but I'm not. I have long felt uh, very ambivalent about the cost of supporting Israel at all costs, especially when this country is riddled with anti-Americanism, riddled with Islamists uh, to the extent that it is, and frankly, we are financially broke. Where do we come off supporting any country? That's, let, me, let me start with that. I don't know why we give Egypt $5 billion in aid and, and Israel $5 billion in aid. It's not 1950 anymore. That's number one. I would cut off all foreign aid, to be frank with you. I don't know if you know that. I'm on record with that, Mike. Yeah. I don't know if you know that. I'm on record. Cut all foreign aid to zero. Let's start with American aid. Self-help first. Where I was God, helps the, God helps those who help themselves. That's number one. Now, as far as why is Israel important to us... I've heard every justification. We can start with the ethical, the moral, although it's gone on a little long now. It's about 70 years of carrying Israel on our back. And uh, frankly, I think the burden is a little heavy, especially since Israel's Israel's economy is doing better than ours. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Israel's economy is healthier than ours is. Maybe Israel ought to give us foreign aid. Now, we have that issue. Then we have many other issues uh, with the world. Which is not to say that there's not a democracy in Israel. There is. It's the most democratic nation in the Middle East, which it is. But it doesn't mean that we have to support it. That's number two. Uh, And very important. I'm glad there's a democracy in Israel. But they should be self-sufficient by now. It's like a child. At what point do you say to the child, I've raised you, I have helped you, I've given you an education, I've given you a house, I've given you a car, You're on your own. When do you say that to Israel? You're on your own. When? Israel has a booming economy. They should be on their own. But we shouldn't be giving Egypt F-16s and F and and uh, and Abrams Abrams tanks. I don't believe. Do you, Mike? No, I agree, hundred percent. You see, I'll tell you what did it for me. I had a a change of opinion about Israel during I think it was um, Gulf War, Gulf War, Gulf War, the first war with G G H. Bush, when we were told before that that Israel was our best ally in the Middle East, Israel would keep the oil flowing, Israel would keep the Suez Canal open, Uh, if there was a problem, Israel was our best ally. It turned out during the Gulf War, Israel didn't fire a shot, didn't use one bullet, not one gallon of jet fuel. Why? Because we were told it would have set off a larger war with their Islamist friends. And so, not only did Israel not support us in the Gulf War of liberating Iraq, uh, liberating Kuwait, but Israel had to be protected with our uh, missile protection system, if you remember. Do you remember that scene? Yep. So then I realized it's a big lie that Israel's our best military ally in the Middle East. What do you mean they're our ally? Not our, we're, we're their supporter. We're their patron. We're their father. And then I realized Israel to America is very much like Cuba was to the ex-Soviet Union. That was how it worked in my mind. I know this is considered sacrilege to many of my listeners, but this is coming from my point of view. We're broke. We're a basket case economy. What are we supporting any country for? I keep asking. They run around giving out five billion here, fifty million there, a hundred million there. Here, they write a check for another two hundred million. Hillary Clinton with the checkbook. Where does she get the money from? Who is in charge of this money? Well, you know that's how I feel on foreign aid. So now let's go back to the uh, issue of ethics and moral. There was a, a, a ethics and morals. America committed itself to Israel after the Holocaust, give Jews a homeland, rightly so, uh, a safe haven, and we did. Israel built itself up. It fought every war successfully. It defended itself against this Islamist murderous neighbors, etc. That's all good. And now what? How long does this go on? A thousand years? I mean, when do, the, when do we say it? We don't have the money anymore. I mean, uh, th- th- this is how I'm seeing it. I'm a, prag- I'm a pragmatist. I'm also an American first, to be very honest with you. I'm not one of these people who believe we should be engaged in every war on every, uh, uh, in every nation on earth. I mean, maybe we should send troops now to, to Syria to defend who? Which side should we defend in Syria? The murderous uh, Assad or the murderous Islamists? Which side are we on in that civil war? 
you know, I don't like foreign entanglements. In that sense, I believe George Washington was correct to uh, mention an old white male, one of the greatest old white males in human history. 